In this video, I'm going to go over how I built and wired up these retro mod panels. Um, they're all wired individually and they're all subconnected. I've actually got a connection block underneath of it. I'll show you that in a minute. But you can see that everything uh, works. I've got bow light, uh, anchor light switch, uh, horn switch, which I added. Um, everything else is just really auxiliary switches. So we've got this whole thing wired up. And uh, there's still some temporary wiring in here, but overall, um, overall, I'm really pleased with the way this came out. So let me uh, let me give you a shot of what it looks like on the inside. So there's the two panels. There's a distribution panel. It's got a steady um, DC feed in, and then a switch. The one on the right, the red one on the right, is uh, switched. So. We'll be uh, doing some wiring on this. So anyway, let me get on with it, show you how I made these custom panels. I actually drew them up on a CAD program, had an uh, outside company make them for me, and uh, got them all wired up. Um, let me go ahead and uh, get started with that. Oh, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button right here. All right, so you've seen what it looks like. Let me go over how I got there and show you. Uh, when I got this boat, these panels um, were in there. And uh, you can see these are the original panels. Uh, I really debated for a while uh, about reusing these. There was a lot of blank space and um, kind of into the conveniences of having some of the uh, features that you would get in a modern boat. So I went online and I found some software called LibreCAD. I've done some minor CAD work in the past, nothing major. Uh, LibreCAD is actually pretty good. Here's a, here's a few little clips of me monkeying around with it. And um, one of the things I wanted to do was stay within the diameter and length width and holes, the screw holes, because I wanted to reuse them of the original one. Uh, turns out LibreCAD's got a, a lot of good features, but I ended up with these. And um, well, you've seen them on the boat, so you know what they're gonna look like. Now, I like to cheat sometimes. So I bought this and, and this, and what I'll be doing is transferring uh, a lot of these components over to these panels. Um, I actually bought a special switch for the horn because it doesn't come with a momentary switch and we want to be able to just turn the uh, horn on and off at a, uh, and we want to be able to turn the uh, horn on and off very quickly. Um, I also bought a two-way switch and uh, this is for the nav light, so we'll have bow light, and then the back is going to do the bow and the uh, and the rear light, the uh, stern light. So I'm going to be adding that to these, and uh, this will be my left hand panel, and because I drive with my right hand. And what I'll do is uh, on my left hand side, I'll have the anchor lights. On the right hand side, I'll put the horn. The reason is if I need the horn, I want to be able to find it really quick. So I'll be able to put those into this panel first, and we'll do the wiring later. Now the wiring for the bell light is uh, kind of odd, but I did find this diagram online and uh, I'll put a link to it in the comment section. Uh, so there's a little bit of a finagling you have to do. And the other thing I did, this is terrible, I almost, almost don't want to show it, is I did this really ugly diagram um, just to give me an outline of what I'm doing. Once I get closer where I'm doing some wiring, the, uh, I'll probably make a better diagram than that. Uh, now one of the problems I have is uh, I always put a start switch or an on off switch on my panels on boats um, once I hit that switch it powers everything up other than the engine that's done by the key. Um, these things are apart so I'm going to have to have a way to interconnect some of the power components and uh, feeds and the way I'm going to do that is with a piece, <laughs> with a piece of mahogany and um, buses and the reason for that is uh, I, there's really no room on those panels to mount these, so uh, I'll be wiring this, testing it all in here before we get it out in the boat, make sure it works. Uh, there's also going to be a relay that powers up uh, the entire system. So let me go ahead and get started. I've got all the components I need here, and I can start putting some of them on the, on the panels themselves because I don't have to worry about following the wiring. I'll do that last. So let me get started. Oh, one last thing. Um, I used a service, I think it's a uh, Send Cut Send. Uh, once you have your CAD drawings done, you send it in, you specify what materials you want, 
Um, in this case, these are all aluminum and they're coated in this rough textured anodizing, which is actually really cool, I think. Um, really reasonable. I spent for these two panels and uh, something to mount the key switch on. I think it was less than $100 with shipping, so well worth it. Alright, so there's a few more things I got to do. Um, I'm going to wire in the light switch correctly and I'll show you the diagram for that in a moment. So completely rewire this and actually it's not a rewire, it's just wiring it from scratch. Um, so I've got an on off switch which will go into a relay, we're going to do some wiring on that. Install these gauges. Uh, this one I'm not going to install because this goes directly into the console. But what I want to do is get all these panels ready and test them, bench test them. I've got a uh, neat little lab power supply here that I can uh, generate pretty much any kind of DC volt, well, within reason. Uh, that it goes up to 100 volts DC. All right, let me go over the wiring for these switches. Um, let's get panned in here. All right, so before I get started, let me do a quick tutorial on these switches. Um, there's a few things you should know about them if you're going to, especially if you're going to replace switches with um, the double throws for the um, bow and anchor light or the momentary for the horn. So let me start with the bow and anchor light. Now, the one thing you'll notice with these switches, they all have a weird numbering scheme. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's repeated amongst all these switches is what I have found. Now for the bow and anchor light, you want your battery negative, your ground if you will, on pin seven. You want your battery positive on pin two. You want to jump it to pin five. And then you want, the anchor light pin, which is one, you want to jump it to six, and then your bow light gets connected to three. One thing you'll find is you'll not get the lights to work correctly on this. They're either all on or all off as far as the lights on the switch, but you will get the capability to turn on the bow light by itself, or when you do the anchor light, it'll turn the bow light on as well. So that's one, uh, probably the most complex one. The next one is the momentary horn switch. You don't have to do a lot with this one. Uh, negative battery, jumper to eight. Battery positive to two, jumper to six. Wire your horn. Um, that'll be the positive to the horn. Of course, you've got your horn grounded somewhere else as well. And that's it. The last one <coughs> is regular SP, uh, a single pulse, single throw switch. Um, that one's a little strange. Uh, it looks worse than it is. Well, you'll also find that some of these don't have connectors, depending on the use. This is a prime example of that. One, four, and five are missing. But you want to do is do battery negative to seven, jumper to eight, battery positive to two, jumper to six, and the device that's being controlled, uh, pin three. That yeah, pretty simple. Um, it's actually a lot simpler than it looks because if you look at this mess, it, it looks uh, it looks complex. This is this is the uh, bow light. I still have to do the jumper in there, and I'll be doing that shortly. Anyway, hope this part's been helpful to you. All right, so this panel is going to be on the left. I want my tack there. Um, <clears throat> it's just a matter of preference on my part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tack and mount it. I'm going to keep everything else inside the tack box until I'm through and I know everything is working just because All right, I'm going to go ahead and wire this, um, finish wiring up this, and also put the <clears throat> speedometer on this. Um, let me use a different perspective. I think I'm just going to go ahead and use this camera.
hopefully you haven't missed too much of the excitement but this is me putting the finishing touches on these panels <laughs> I'll explain things in a minute And this point will come from the uh, from the uh, console, the engine uh, cable. I think this one's already done. Um, I've got the two outputs. Excuse me. I've got the two outputs, uh, anchor and bow light. And then uh, and these, if you'll notice, the outputs are always females. The inputs to this panel are going to be from a distribution panel. And uh, I've got the negative marked. And I've got. Oh, I've never marked the positive, so I'll do that. <clears throat> All right, so I've got a few things going on here. This is, for the most part, wired up, um, ready to go. Uh, I've got the diagrams that describe how this wiring works. You know, we've covered that to some extent. The important thing, though, is turning all this on. I've got a switch here. And what I want to do is take this switch, this bundle of wires, and control this relay, which is going to feed the uh, positive side of this distribution bus. So basically the way it's going to work is uh, this is going to be dead. I'll have um, some hot wires. I'll have power going here into the switch, and when we activate the switch, the switch will close the relay and it'll power this up. Uh, this in turn will then feed the uh, two panels. So the question is, how do we do this? So I've created this schematic and what that's going to allow me to do is connectorize this so that every component is modular and um, that way I can put them in the boat, take, it in, take them in and out, but it's all going to be connectorized. Now in case you're wondering, I also have an overall schematic and I'll post these um, I'll post links to these and this kind of shows you how the two panels are wired and and what the distribution panel with the relay uh, looks like so let me go ahead and do that because uh, this is a, a critical part I got to get this right and uh, I'll do is I'll move the camera get a close-up so you can see what I'm doing all right so this is the distribution panel and again I'm gonna build everything so it's modular uh, we want to be able to disconnect the panel uh, disconnect the panels themselves uh, the lights so if anything has to come in and out um, it's gonna make it easier to put it all in the boat to be honest with you and then just connect wiring as needed um, so the first thing I want to do since we're going to connect the switch to this relay is take the output of the relay which is the yellow according to this diagram right power out 87 is yellow and um, feed it to the uh, hot now I'm using 12 gauge because it seems appropriate for something that could carry a, a somewhat significant load this relay is rated for 30 amps so um, we should be good with that All right, so I've taken a slightly different approach. I actually ended up um, adding another bus. This is a hot bus directly from the battery because we do we, we need that to power up the relay and the um, and the switch. Um, so yeah, there you are. <laughs> anyway, um, labeling everything with my little uh, handy uh, label maker here, and um, this one is ground for the switch. It's actually the last connection that we need to make. And um, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Uh, I'll do a female on this side, male on this side. 
All right, so I've got all the wiring done. Um, I really wanted to capture more of the wiring process, but to be honest with you, this would be a three hour video, even compressed. So what I've done instead is I've uh, created these schematics of exactly what I've done here. Uh, this one is for the switch and the relay. This one is for the overall panel construction, um, as well as individual um, PDFs for the switches and um, other components in here. I'll put those in the description so you can download them. Now that I've completed this, I'm going to test it. Um, I've got temporary power. I've got a little lab um, power supply here that I'm going to use. And I've got that cabled up to the distribution panel. I know it looks messy. These are temporary. Um, normally it's going to look like this. But I find this a lot easier to do this, this way. Everything's connectorized. And we'll... Uh, We'll, when we put it in the boat, we'll uh, finish up the connectors. So, let's look at this. What should happen is when I power this up, the switch will power up the relay that I have on the distribution panel. And we should get lights across the board, which we do. Now that one is different. Uh, the horn is going to have a light constantly on there and a switch. So these switches all have lights. Um, this one is the uh, anchor and bow light. When you go forward, both lights, both uh, bow and anchor lights. Uh, these are just convenience, uh, just as these are. Um, so everything's working. Uh, it's fused. Uh, this is Thomas the voltage. Uh, they were left over from the original panel. So everything's good at this point uh, we're really ready to mount this in the boat and uh, that's uh, going to be the next step so all right that's the end of this video um, you see i've got this panels constructed the next couple of videos are all going to be around the console the next thing i'm going to do is run the steering and the reason for that is that that's got the heaviest thickest cable that um, can interfere with other cables or break other cables so i'm going to go from heaviest thickest on down to lightest and most delicate uh, but most of it's going to revolve around the console, so expect to see that. Anyway, if this video has been helpful to you, hit share and like, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.